it don't belongs to just one person. Amen. You know, it belongs to the body. Amen. And, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm endeavoring to have some wisdom about uh, certain things, you know, but uh, sometimes I have a little problem when people, uh, like you copyright a message. You know, in other words, I can, this is my message, and, and you can't teach it because it's my revelation. Well, it re it's really not your revelation. Amen. You know, but it's a scripture that says, what does it, is it that we have that wasn't given to us? And everything that we possess, you know, and especially as it relates to understanding and wisdom and knowledge and all that kind of stuff, it was given to us. Y'all got it? It was either given to us uh, directly from the Spirit of God, who is our teacher, or it was given uh, to us uh, by those whom God had placed into our lives to be our instructors, right? And so for me to try to copyright uh, the wisdom of God, you know, I kind of, I'm still having issues with, y'all got it? And, and I know you know, what the world system says, you know, that you can't, if you put it in a book and I buy the book, it, it's mine. It's no longer yours. I, and if you feel like you need to be, be compensated for it, I am already compensated because I haven't paid for the book. Y'all, you know what I mean? That's, that's like, Oh, Lord. You give an offering in the church, and then you try to tell me what to do with it. <laughs> Once you sow it, right, it belongs to the ministry. And uh, uh, I'm just using that to illustrate my point. You know, and on your tithe envelope, you, 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 you read down at the bottom and say, we reserve the right to channel these finances in the directions that, you know, the ministry needed the most. Is that right? that all right? Ain't nothing wrong with that, is it? You got it. And so uh, I feel that way about, about Revelation, and I share with the brother. I say, well, listen, man, if, if I hear you minister somewhere, and you bless me, and I believe it's going to bless my folk, I say, I might mention your name one time. <laughs> you got it. But, but after that, you know, it, be, it belongs to the body, Amen. right? And because God wants the whole body to be blessed by his wisdom, right, and by uh, his instructions, amen. And I believe so long as we stay, we stay teachable, uh, God will constantly teach us. Y'all got it? And give us instructions. And, uh, and we just got to come to a place where we understand that, you know, instructions are important. It's not just something, a form of fashion that we go through, Right. Uh, the word instruction is the uh, derivative of the word to instruct, which is de defined as to teach, to educate, to construct, uh, to build. It means to be given the correct facts about a certain matter or to reveal the correct mode of operation of a thing. Amen? And instructions are important. Instructions are essential uh, to the order that life demands. I like when I say that because it's true. Instructions are essential to the order that life demands, and without them, there, can, there will be chaos, confusion, fear, uh, instability, loss of security and happiness, and it can even lead to a premature loss of life, right? So instructions are vitally important. It's just, not, it's just not somebody trying to tell you what to do. You got all things being equal. Uh, that person who God puts in your life to instruct you that person is there for your security. That person is there to, to get you around some things. You, you, gotta, you, you don't have to go through everything Amen. Amen. that folks say you got to go through. Right. Not, not if you're a person who's willing to, to receive instructions, right? Amen. I mean, if I tell you it's a pothole down there, you don't have to go down there to run into it to believe me. <laughs> Just believe it's a pothole down there. Right. If, if the police is dying there, you know, I mean, you, you, you see people blinking, they flashing their lights. You know, everybody know what that means. 
if you don't slow down, somebody down there waiting on you. Right. See, so 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 instructions are designed for for our security, amen, and for uh, our safety, amen. And I make the statement that quality of life is directly tied to the instructions that you are willing to follow. And there can be no positive quality of life that you can achieve without adherence to the instructions that produce that quality of life. You got it? So quality of life is directed directly tied to the instructions that you are willing to receive. You got it? You can have a life that's full of quality, and you can have a life that's not full of quality, you know, depending on what type of instructions that you receive. You got it? It makes sense, right? If you receive good instructions, it's going to bless your life, right? If you receive bad instructions, you know, it's not going to go well, right? If you reject good instructions, it's not going to go well. Amen? And, and you know, life is choice-driven. You know, a lot of times people blame, blame a lot of things on God, but the Scripture literally says life is choice driven you know I think it was Joshua said that uh, you know God gonna set before you you know uh, uh, life and death blessing and cursing and he said but you choose right and so uh, and a lot of people don't want to accept that that level of responsibility but life is choice driven you got in the first fall the result of the fall was because of the choices that were made. Amen. It wasn't because, amen, it was the will of God that they fell, right? But it was because of the choices uh, that, that they made. And, uh, and in this life, a lot of times, negativity, I ain't just saying this is always, I know it's the devil out there and all that kind of stuff, but I, I choose not to, with my mouth, give him a blank check to just run around and do anything he want to do uh, when he want to do it. Amen. You got it? Amen. And, uh, well, Pastor, you had your challenge. Yeah, I had my challenge, but I fought him every, st every step of the way. Amen. You understand? And still trying to knock him in the head. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. I, I fought while I was sitting over there. Amen. Right? I fought when I had to sit in that chair. I fought when I stood up down there. Amen. And I'm, I'm standing up where I'm supposed to be at right now. Y'all, it, it wasn't because I laid down and. and you know, and, and a lot of times, you know, sometimes people didn't, didn't even understand the fight, see. But in, in that initial challenge, see, I, listen, I wasn't playing with this. I was believing what I was preaching. Y'all got it. And, 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 and when that, and that time came, you know, that challenge came, I couldn't give, come off of that. It would have been detrimental at that initial stage for me to come off of, oh, y'all about to make me mad. In a godly way. It would have been detrimental to me for me to come off of where I was. Amen. Amen. And once I got stable, then I could back up into what we call the wisdom of man. But until I personally got stable with my faith, I could not do that. Are y'all right? And you need to know when, you know, when to come back and, and when not to come back. Y'all got it? Because this, this, this is my life. It's all I had to stand on. Y'all got it? And, and, and sometimes, oh, God, you had to put your life on the line. Okay, y'all. Y'all, y'all. You going to believe God? Y'all get this kind of hand. Y'all see that pocketbook? I did that. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot. But 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 we're talking about you know uh, the importance of 
of obeying instructions and, and that, that, you know, all through the scripture, you know, it, it indicates that if we follow the instructions of the Lord, amen, and, and, and good wisdom, amen, we have a different quality of life than what other people have. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Amen. amen. And I don't know about you, I'm looking for a good quality of life. Amen. amen. Life was never designed to be lived successfully without instructions. You got it? Life was never designed to, live, uh, to be lived successfully uh, without instructions. In fact, it cannot be lived successfully uh, without instructions. Amen? How many of y'all agree with that? Amen. Amen. If, if whatever degree of, of, of what you deem as success in your life, uh, just in manifestation, is because of the instructions that you follow that led to that degree of success. Y'all got it? And there are instructions ordained of God for each dimension of our lives. Whatever, whatever aspect of your life that, that you need instructions in, it's in this book. Amen. Right? If, 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 if you want to get married, there are instructions in this Bible that you need to have, wait, before you get married. You get them after you get married, but but wisdom dictate you get them before you get married. If you want to have a quality marriage, preaching real good, Pastor Kyle, right? And uh, and wisdom dictate that you obey those instructions. Y'all all right? I ain't at nobody. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you the, the, the truth, right? Y'all got it? And so uh, uh, whatever area of life you need help in, man, the answer is in this book. It's some instructions for it, right? You know, how to handle your money, how to handle your children, right? How to handle your, 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 your wife, your husband, you know, how to handle your sister, your brother. You got it? How to handle your employer. Yeah. It's all in here. Right? We, we don't have to be ignorant to what we need to know and what we need to do. Y'all got it? We don't have to be. Amen. And so, and, I, and I'm glad we don't have to be. Amen? If you want to know sincerely, God will get the information to you that you need. Right? It's an amazing thing that there are people who want great success in life, but they do not, they are not willing to adhere to the instructions that produce uh, that success. Amen? So, you know, you just having a desire uh, uh, to be successful and not be willing to obey the instructions that produce success is not a kosher thing. It's not going to, those two things are not going to jive. Did he say jive? I sure did. Amen. They, they, you you got to get woker than that. You, you, you can't. <laughs> right? You got you to be woke than that. Amen. Go to Mark 1 and 38, please. See, can we move on? Y'all get anything out of this? I think it's important because, you know, we're at the beginning of the year, and, um, And I believe God is saying to us that, you know, as we go on into the year, make sure you stay sensitive and keen to, to his instructions. Amen? Amen. That he's going to uh, be giving all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, can, I, can I share some with you? You are on the list to receive instructions Amen. from the Lord, Amen. right, individually, mm -hmm. as, as well as a corporate body, right? Everybody say, God, God has, instructions has instructions for me, for me in, 2020. in 2020. And I will, and I will be obedient. Be obedient. Amen. 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 There's some things God going to instruct us all in. And, and I'm not talking about negative things. You got it. I'm talking about things that's going to lead to a better quality of life uh, for all of us. Amen. A couple of Sundays ago, as I was praying for the office, the Lord offering, I think I told you on, on New Year's Eve, the Lord spoke to me and, and said that for us to expect 
more in 2020 than we experienced in 2019. Amen. Amen. And I'm in expectation for, of that. That, that God's going to give us all more. Amen. He's going to reveal more. Hallelujah. He's going to allow us to access more Amen. than what we had access to in uh, 2019. Amen. Is that all right? Amen. Mark 138. Are you there? Amen. It says, and he, Jesus, said unto him, see thou say nothing to any man. That's where you are. Amen. But go where y'all at. Well, what am I reading? 44? What am I reading? <laughs> yeah. Well, y'all, if y'all was in the spirit, y'all be down to verse, <laughs> verse 44. Well, 38 must be talking about when Jesus healed this particular individual, right, of leprosy, right? And um, by the time we get down to verse 44, y'all get there. Uh, Jesus was giving him some instructions. Amen. And he, Jesus, said unto him, that's where y'all are? Amen. That's where I am. He says, see thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much and began to blaze abroad the matter insomuch that Jesus could no more enter the city, but was without in the desert place, and they came to him from every quarter. Amen. And, uh, and my point I was going to bring out about that particular passage was the fact Jesus had healed a man, and after healing the man, he gave him instructions to go show himself to the priest and to tell no man about the matter, right? But this particular individual thought he had a testimony, which he had a testimony, but it was not supposed to be revealed at that time. And Jesus said, don't tell nobody. Right? Can the Lord bless you and you don't tell nobody? If he says so. You know, sometimes it ain't good to tell everybody what God did done did for you. Some folk can't handle it. They can't. Amen. And so I believe Jesus meant exactly what he said. He told them, don't, don't tell no man. And the Bible said, but he began to publish it much and began to blaze it abroad, uh, uh, the whole matter, right? And so much that Jesus could no more enter into the city, but was without in the desert place, and they came to him from every quarter. And so because of this man's disobedience, Jesus could no longer openly go into the city and minister. Somebody might say, well, he, he got healed. He was glad. He was grateful. He just wanted to tell of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord told him, don't tell nobody. But because he refused to obey instructions, let me ask you, you think there was any more people in the city needed healing? Needed to receive from the ministry of Jesus. I'm talking about in the city. But because he refused to obey instructions, Jesus could no longer go into the city. He had to go out into the desert place. I would imagine there were some people who had ailments that couldn't make it to the desert. But because he refused to obey instructions they didn't receive and so my question is it possible that your refusal to obey instruction carries with it an intended or unintended effect on the lives of other people y'all got it and, and that's important because a lot of times you know the way that we I'll say sometime unconsciously talk ourselves out of being obedient to instructions is because we think it only involves us. My obedience or, or disobedience only affects me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. You ever subconsciously kind of felt that way? But I'm not saying you go around and say, well, you know, 
my obedience in this matter is only going to affect me. But yet you act like that. And if we don't be careful, we'll let that, that type of a mindset keep us from obeying God, not understanding that there are other people uh, that are attached to your obedience. Go to Genesis 2 and 8. Genesis 2 and 8, when you get there, let me hear you say, Amen. Amen. Let me get over here so y'all won't accuse me of not being there. You there? It says, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, right? And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted. From thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pi son, and that is which compasses the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Beldalum and the oxen stone, onyx stones. And the name of the, the second river uh, is Jehan, the same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. The name of that of the third river is Hedekio, that is it which goeth toward the east of the Syria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, right? He gave the man instructions, right? Saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest there, thereof, thou shalt what? Surely. Thou shalt surely surely die, right? Now, those were some, a serious set of instructions right there, right? And I would imagine, you know, probably the Adam and Eve probably thought that, you know, perhaps this would only affect them in their minds. It would be all right not to really follow the leading of the Lord at this particular time. Right? Not understanding that their refusal to obey instructions was going to affect whole of humanity. Affect humanity as a whole. Y'all got it? Go to Genesis 3 and, and, uh, and 1. It says, Now the shepherd was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, you should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the, tree, of the fruit of the trees of the gardens, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God do know that in the day that Ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And they were already like God. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eye, and a tree to be desired, to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto a man her husband with her, and he did eat. My goodness. Well, <laughs> we just read the book, yeah, right, right. My mama used to say, boy, don't you be eating everywhere? Yeah. 
I, I heard one preacher say, well, ladies, I'm just, I'm just a little levity here, right? So sometimes women flirt with food. <laughs> right? You, they say the way to a man's heart is, that's what they say, right, is what? Right? It's through his stomach, right? So, you want a good cook, but you had to watch them cooks. <laughs> she definitely need to know how to cook. Right, but don't you be eating before time. Lord, how much y'all, y'all, some of y'all can't even take a joke. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you the truth, but like when you go on everywhere, eating everywhere, Amen. you know. But on, but that's that's serious business, though. You know, cause I mean, we ain't heard some stories. Y'all just don't know. Y'all, y'all ain't even ready. Y'all ain't even ready. That's why you pray over your food. You know, and, and walk in wisdom. You don't go in there fussing at the folks that go in the back fixing your food. Right. That ain't even smart. You know, and, and I'm not saying you, you don't have the right to say, you know, I don't like this and whatever, but don't be raising no sand and then you're going you gonna to eat what they fix you after you. I was in a restaurant on years ago on, on uh, Spring Hill Avenue in Crichton, you know, kind of seafood place right in there next to uh, Hart's Fried Chicken. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and, uh, and uh, me and I was in there and another individual was in there. And he was raising sand with the people behind the counter. I'm talking about he fussing them. Woo! And they took his food and took it back to the counter, opened that thing and pushed it back up in there and closed it back up. And I looked at him, and, and you going to eat that when it come back out? <laughs> and I said, you in here, you know, cussing these folks out there. And you finna eat what they bring me behind there? <laughs> That's not smart at all. And he didn't look like a prayer. He, 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 he did. Yeah, he didn't look like he was the Lord bless and sanctify this food, let it be used for, be nourishment for my body. He did. Yeah, I, I'm like, no, nah, bro, that ain't that ain't even smart at all. You, know, you, you, you might have should have said that's all right, just cancel my order, but 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 don't take it back there and close them doors after. What verse did I stop at? It says, and the eyes of them both were open, and, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. You have just been blessed by studying the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser, Jr., if you would like an audio or video copy of today's message, please email us at rdtwtvpros at gmail.com. Connect with us daily on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or Ustream to catch past shows, words of encouragement, special events, or join us live in the sanctuary. We're located at 760 Ermira Street in Mobile, Alabama. Our service times are Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship at 11 o'clock, and Tuesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Join us at this same time next week for a study in the word broadcast with Apostle David Kaiser Jr. You be blessed. <laughs>